All right, everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video is just going to be a short video today because we're going to talk about some things that are pretty important. We're going to be changing the differential oil and having a look at the diff and see how the gears are mating. So currently right now, I pushed about 600 kilometers on this differential. Now, of course, every time you do a gear install, there is the break-in period. The most important is three short driving trips. Could be anywhere between five to 10 kilometers, maybe 15 to 25 minutes. During this time, you wanna take a short trip. You wanna let the vehicle sit, monitor the temperatures if possible because the differential is gonna be the hottest once it's first breaking in. Everything's tight. Your preload is tight, your gears have to mesh. You know, it's got all that paint and stuff on them. They all have to mesh. So when you change your oil, don't be surprised to see a lot of metal filings in there. That is just the gears wearing. Now throughout the process of the break-in, my average temperature is probably about 145 degrees Fahrenheit, which has been the average temperature, and that's taking the temperature gun, spotting off the uh, differential or the pinion bearings and also off the pumpkin itself. Now the rule of thumb, this is not written in stone because it depends if you're using synthetic oil, dinosaur oil, it's all different. But generally a rule of thumb is at around 140 degrees Fahrenheit, providing that there's no contaminants or the oil's dirty, you should be able to get a million kilometers out of that oil running temperatures at 140 now that being said every 20 degrees increase in temperature decreases that oil by half so if you're towing or something or working it really hard you could be seeing temperatures up to 200 degrees which will greatly shorten the life of the oil so that's why during the gear break-in it's important that you don't drive it hard not doing burnouts don't go out wheeling don't be towing a trailer till after the break-in because if you heat up your differential too quick too fast that oil is going to break down really quick and basically once you get over 250 degrees on your bearings they start to fail and break down this is very important this is one of the reasons why the break-in is very important so i'm going to go underneath I'm gonna jack up the rear end, put the transfer case in neutral. We're gonna dump the oil. And like I said, don't be surprised to see metal filings because it should be quite a bit. I would be surprised if there was no metal filings. I'd be a little concerned, but there will be. What you don't wanna see is chunks of metal. You don't wanna see another tooth off a pinion gear in there like what I initially found. That would not be good. Everything that I need is right down there. So this is going to be the moment of truth where I'm either going to cry or things are going to be looking good. If I don't have my preload set right, that little ring from the ARB lock with the copper tube probably would have spun around, broke off the copper tube. I'm pretty sure I got the preload set right. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous right now to open up the back and see what awaits. This is where the 
the truth is going to come out. What's nice about these A or B covers is that they have a drain plug. He's coming out, bunch of metal fleek, right on the magnet, which is to be expected, 600 kilometers, he's pretty dark, pretty dark. It's not terrible. All right, oh. bust the case open now. I just want to tap these all free by hand first before I put the ratchet on it. Uh, that one was loose up top. Interesting. Bunch of metal filing on there. No chunks. Copper tube is still attached. Good sign all around. Good sign all around. Just by going by observation, very happy the way the gear pattern is starting to wear on the teeth. Everything looks like it's all centered. Like I said, the copper tubes in place. Want to check all your ring gear bolts. Make sure. By any chance, they're not starting to come out. And that's why you use red Loctite on them. Because you definitely don't want that to back out and cause all sorts of issues. Jesus, if that was a red balloon and there's a clown nearby, I would probably be shitting my pants right about now. That balloon is like possessed. Yes, yeah, so what I was going to say, now going back to the ARB locker setup, I just recently installed an onboard air system. Now my onboard air... It's set at 150 PSI. Now, if I would hook that 150 PSI up to this ARB locker, I would blow the seals out. I do believe, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, is that the ARB is supposed to run between 85 and 110 PSI. So I'll probably set mine regulator at about 100 PSI. But I wonder if that's the issues where a lot of people talk about they blow the seals out is because they are using too high of an air pressure. And that's what's causing it to happen. But I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'm going to bolt it back up. Whoa, whoa. Back up. Back up. You just take off, Mr. Balloon. I want to get rough with you. So we're going to bolt it back up. Fill her up full of oil. And I'm pretty satisfied with the results. I was pretty nervous to take this apart. And see if there's going to be any carnage. One more thing too I'm going to bring up is lube blockers. I am a huge fan of lube blockers. That way you don't have to worry about silicone and putting it on. You can 
take your cover off, re-put it on lots of times with this, no worries. But I had some people talk about, you know, they still used one and they had some leakages. But I don't necessarily think it is the gasket's fault. There's many variables that can go along with it. One of them is if you have like the original differential cover that's just steel by busting it apart, the the cover could be warped, which would be causing a leak. But I was having a seeping issue with this one here, but it's not because of the gasket itself. It's because of all that rust on the bottom, which is really preventing a seal. Now I just used some Scotch-Brite on the bottom there and cleaned it up, but I'm going to clean that up and then you're gonna see a difference. So I'll take my Scotch-Brite pad here. Really, what it's doing is taking off all the high spots. The high spots is what's going to cause it to leak. And that's what we're getting rid of right here. There you have it. It's going to be night and day difference, especially when it comes to making a seal. That seepage problem should definitely be over with now. Just gonna smug them up. Now this is debatable in itself and there's a couple things you could have done is there's no lock washers on these socket head bolts. I'm not a fan of them. Person should have probably could have used Loctite but the threads inside are so small that they could strip really easy especially with this style of fastener. It's easy to round them out then you're asking for a lot more, a lot more trouble. I could have also used some RTV gasket maker on the threads as well. And that would kind of help seal it in place. But I just kind of tightened them down, crisscross pattern. Gonna have to check them again because with our climate, the moisture and corrosion will lock tight them in themselves. So I'm gonna pull that top cap out. We're gonna start filling. And then I'm glad this project is done. This dipstick tube is definitely kind of interesting. Especially with the track bar kind of in the way. I'll get that out right here. The balloon keeps on stalking me. All right, now to fill the oil. Oil is one of these things that's a preference. I got this AMS oil, 7590. I used a heavier weight for the break-in. These actually aren't too bad because you just snip the top off and then if I prop it properly up top, it'll just slowly drain in without making too much of a mess. Oh, I spilled a little bit. It's nice because the uh, bags will just almost like vacuum suck dry when it's empty. So we're going to put in like between 2.3 and 2.5 liters roughly. Want the level to be pretty close to where bottom of the tube is. 
There I am. It's all filled up. Roughly two and a half liters. This is the stuff that came out. That'll be quite a bit of metallic flake in there. Alright. Dump that into the recycle. As you see the metallic sheen from the oil break in. All right, shut her down. Like I said, quick video. It's motherfucking beer time. I am so happy that the differential is looking good. Let's crack this open, have a sip. So I got between 2.3, two and a half quarts or liters, which is right in the ballpark where I need to be. Oil level is very important. In case some people don't know, gear oil is really designed to put a film of oil between both gears meshing. Because if your gears were touching all the time, metal on metal, they would wear down really quick. The gear oil is a high pressure oil that's designed to form like an oil wedge so that there's less friction involved there. That's why your gears can last a long time. So if you don't have enough gear oil in there, it's gonna heat up quicker, the oil's gonna break down faster, and everything's gonna wear out. Now on the opposite end, if you have too much gear oil, it's gonna start foaming. And when it starts foaming, you're not gonna get that oil wedge between the gears, and that's gonna wear them out really quickly. That's why it's important that you gotta have the proper level. Anyway, it's motherfucking beer time. And if you guys like these types of videos and you made it this far, I highly suggest you go check out my other channel, BSK Garage. That's where all my DIY videos are now, not a vlog. It's how I did each job on all my vehicles on both Jeeps and the JL. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short video. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay cool. Ah, yeah.